a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Antikythera Mechanism The Antikythera Mechanism is an ancient Greek analog computer and orrery used to predict astronomical positions and eclipses for calendar and astrological purposes decades in advance. It could also track the four-year cycle of athletic games which was similar to an Olympiad, the cycle of the ancient Olympic Games. The device was found housed in the remains of a 340mm x 180mm x 90mm wooden box. It is a complex clockwork mechanism composed of at least 30 meshing bronze gears. A team led by Mike Edmonds and Tony Freeth at Cardiff University used modern computer X-ray tomography and higher resolution surface scanning to image inside fragments of the crust encased mechanism and read the faintest inscriptions that once covered the outer casing of the machine. Detailed imaging of the mechanism suggests that it had 37 gear wheels enabling it to follow the movements of the moon and the sun through the zodiac, to predict eclipses, and even to model the irregular orbit of the moon where the moon's velocity is higher in its perigee than in its apogee. This motion was studied in the 2nd century BC by astronomer Hipparchus of Rhodes, and it is speculated that he may have been consulted in the machine's construction. Its remains were found as one lump, later separated into three main fragments which are now divided into 82 separate fragments after conservation works. Four of these fragments contain gears, while inscriptions are found on many others. The largest gear is approximately 140 mm in diameter, and originally had 223 teeth. The artifact was discovered on 17 May 1902 by archaeologist Valerios Stays, among wreckage retrieved from a wreck off the coast of the Greek island Antikythera. The instrument is believed to have been designed and constructed by Greek scientists, and has been variously dated to about 87 BC, or between 150 and 100 BC, or to 205 BC, or to within a generation before the shipwreck, which has been dated to approximately 7060 BC. The knowledge of this technology was lost at some point in antiquity, and technological works approaching its complexity and workmanship did not appear again until the development of mechanical astronomical clocks in Europe in the 14th century. All known fragments of the Antikythera mechanism are kept at the National Archaeological Museum in Athens, along with a number of artistic reconstructions of how the mechanism may have looked. Discovery of the Antikythera Mechanism The Antikythera Mechanism was retrieved from 45 meters of water in the Antikythera shipwreck of Point Glyphadia on the Greek island of Antikythera in 1901, most probably in July. The wreck had been found in April 1900 by a group of Greek sponge divers who retrieved numerous large artifacts, including bronze and marble statues, pottery, unique glassware, jewelry, coins, and the mechanism. All were transferred to the National Museum of Archaeology in Athens for storage and analysis. The mechanism was merely a lump of corroded bronze and wood at the time, and went unnoticed for two years, while museum staff worked on piecing together more obvious statues. On 17 May 1902, archaeologist Valerios Stays found that one of the pieces of rock had a gear wheel embedded in it. He initially believed that it was an astronomical clock, but most scholars considered the device to be prochronistic too complex to have been constructed during the same period as the other pieces that had been discovered. Investigations into the object were dropped until British science historian and Yale University professor Derek J. de Sola Price became interested in it in 1951. In 1971, Price and Greek nuclear physicist Shara Lampos Karakalos made X-ray and gamma-ray images of the 82 fragments. Price published an extensive 70-page paper on their findings in 1974. It is not known how the mechanism came to be on the cargo ship, but it has been suggested that it was being taken from Rhodes to Rome, together with other looted treasure, to support a triumphal parade being staged by Julius Caesar. Origin The Antikythera mechanism is generally referred to as the first known analog computer. The quality and complexity of the mechanism's manufacture suggests that it is undiscovered predecessors made during the Hellenistic period. Its construction relied on theories of astronomy and mathematics developed by Greek astronomers, and it is estimated to have been created around the late 2nd century BC. In 1974, Derek de Sola Price concluded from gear settings 
and inscriptions on the mechanism's faces that it was made about 87 BC and lost only a few years later. Jacques Cousteau and associates visited the wreck in 1976 and recovered coins dated between 76 and 67 BC. The mechanism's advanced state of corrosion has made it impossible to perform an accurate compositional analysis, but it is believed that the device was made of a low-tin bronze alloy. Its instructions were composed in Koine Greek. In 2008, continued research by the Antikythera Mechanism Research Project suggested that the concept for the mechanism may have originated in the colonies of Corinth, since they identified the calendar on the Metonic spiral as coming from Corinth or one of its colonies in northwest Greece or Sicily. Syracuse was a colony of Corinth and the home of Archimedes and the Antikythera Mechanism Research Project argued in 2008 that it might imply a connection with the school of Archimedes. However, it has recently been demonstrated that the calendar on the Metonic spiral is indeed of the Corinthian type, but cannot be that of Syracuse. Another theory suggests that coins found by Jacques Cousteau at the wreck site in the 1970s date to the time of the device's construction, and posits that its origin may have been from the ancient Greek city of Pergamon home of the Library of Pergamon. With its many scrolls of art and science, it was second in importance only to the Library of Alexandria during the Hellenistic period. The ship carrying the device also contained vases in the Rhodian style, leading to a hypothesis that it was constructed at an academy founded by Stoic philosopher Posidonius on that Greek island. Rhodes was a busy trading port in antiquity and a center of astronomy and mechanical engineering home to astronomer Hipparchus who was active from about 140 BC to 120 BC. The mechanism uses Hipparchus' theory for the motion of the moon, which suggests the possibility that he may have designed it or at least worked on it. In addition, it has recently been argued that the astronomical events on the parapigma of the Antikythera mechanism work best for latitudes in the range of 33.337.0 degrees north. The island of Rhodes is located between the latitudes of 35.85 and 36.50 degrees north. In 2014, a study by Carmen and Evans argued for a new dating of approximately 200 BC based on identifying the start update on the Saros style as the astronomical lunar month that began shortly after the new moon of 28 of April 205 BC. Moreover, According to Carmen and Evans, the Babylonian arithmetic style of prediction fits much better with the device's predictive models than the traditional Greek trigonometric style. A study by Paul Avison published in 2017 reasons that the prototype for the device was indeed from Rhodes, but that this particular model was modified for a client from Epirus in northwestern Greece, and was probably constructed within a generation of the shipwreck. Further dives are being undertaken in the hope of discovering more of the mechanism. Description The original mechanism apparently came out of the Mediterranean as a single encrusted piece. Soon afterward it fractured into three major pieces. Other small pieces have broken off in the interim from cleaning and handling, and still others were found on the seafloor by the Cousteau expedition. Other fragments may still be in storage, undiscovered since their initial recovery. Fragment F came to light in that way in 2005. Of the 82 known fragments, seven are mechanically significant and contain the majority of the mechanism and inscriptions. There are also 16 smaller parts that contain fractional and incomplete inscriptions. Minor fragments Many of the smaller fragments that have been found contain nothing of apparent value. However, a few have some inscriptions on them. Fragment 19 contains significant backdoor inscriptions including one reading.76 years, which refers to the Calopopic cycle. Other inscriptions seem to describe the function of the back dials. In addition to this important minor fragment, 15 further minor fragments have remnants of inscriptions on them. Operation on the front face of the mechanism there is a fixed ring dial representing the ecliptic, the 12 zodiacal signs marked off, with equal 30 degree sectors. This matched with the Babylonian custom of assigning one twelfth of the ecliptic to each zodiac sign equally, even though the constellation boundaries were variable. Outside of the dial is another ring which is rotatable, marked off with the months and days of the Suffolk Egyptian calendar, 12 months of 30 days plus 5 intercalary days. 
The months are marked with the Egyptian names, for the months transcribed into the Greek alphabet. The first task, then, is to rotate the Egyptian calendar ring, to match the current zodiac points. The Egyptian calendar ignored leap days, so it advanced through a full zodiac sign in about 120 years. The mechanism was operated by turning a small hand crank which was linked via a crown gear to the largest gear. The four-spoked gear visible on the front of fragment A, the gear named B1. This moved the date pointer on the front dial, which would be set to the correct Egyptian calendar day. The year is not selectable, so it is necessary to know the year currently set, or by looking up the cycles indicated by the various calendar cycle indicators on the back in the Babylonian ephemeris tables. For the day of the year currently set, since most of the calendar cycles are not synchronous with the year, the crank moves the date pointer about 78 days per full rotation. So hitting a particular day on the dial would be easily possible if the mechanism were in good working condition. The action of turning the hand crank would also cause all interlocked gears within the mechanism to rotate resulting in the simultaneous calculation of the position of the sun and moon, the moon phase, eclipse, and calendar cycles, and perhaps the locations of planets. The operator also had to be aware of the position of the spiral dial pointers on the two large dials on the back. The pointer had a follower that tracked the spiral incisions in the metal as the dials incorporated four and five full rotations of the pointers. When a pointer reached the terminal month location at either end of the spiral, the pointer's follower had to be manually moved to the other end of the spiral before proceeding further. Front Face The front dial has two concentric circular scales that represent the path of the ecliptic through the heavens. The outer ring is marked off with the days of the 365-day Egyptian civil calendar. On the inner ring, a second dial marks the Greek signs of the zodiac, with division into degrees. The mechanism predates the Julian calendar reform, but the Suthic and Kalapapic cycles had already pointed to a 365 and one quarter day solar year, as seen in Ptolemy III's abortive calendrical reform of 238. The dials are not believed to reflect his proposed leap day, but the outer calendar dial may be moved against the inner dial to compensate for the effect of the extra quarter day in the solar year. By turning the scale backward one day every four years, the position of the sun on the ecliptic corresponds to the current date in the year. The orbits of the moon and the five planets known to the Greeks are close enough to the ecliptic to make it a convenient reference for defining their positions as well. The following three Egyptian months are inscribed in Greek letters on the surviving pieces of the outer ring. The other months have been reconstructed, although some reconstructions of the mechanism omit the five days of the Egyptian intercalary month. The zodiac dial contains Greek inscriptions of the members of the zodiac, which is believed to be adapted to the tropical month version rather than the sidereal. Also on the zodiac dial are a number of single characters at specific points. They are keyed to a parapigma a precursor of the modern-day almanac inscribed on the front face above and beneath the dials. They mark the locations of longitudes on the ecliptic. For specific stars, the parapigma above the dials reads, the parapigma beneath the dials reads, at least two pointers indicated positions of bodies upon the ecliptic. A lunar pointer indicated the position of the moon, and a mean sun pointer also was shown, perhaps doubling as the current date pointer. The moon position was not a simple mean moon indicator that would indicate movement uniformly around a circular orbit. It approximated the acceleration and deceleration of the moon's elliptical orbit through the earliest extant use of epicyclic gearing. It also tracked the precession of the elliptical orbit around the ecliptic in an 8.88 year cycle. The mean sun position is, by definition, the current date. It is speculated that since such pains were taken to get the position of the moon correct, then there also was likely to have been a true sun pointer in addition to the mean sun pointer likewise to track the elliptical anomaly of the sun. But there is no evidence of it among the ruins of the mechanism found to date. Similarly, neither is there the evidence of planetary orbit pointers for the five planets known to the Greeks among the ruins. See proposed planet indication gearing schemes below. Finally, mechanical engineer Michael Wright has demonstrated that there was a mechanism to supply the lunar phase in addition to the position. The indicator was a small ball embedded in the lunar pointer, half white and half black, which rotated to show the phase graphically. The data, 
to support this function is available given the Sun and Moon positions as angular rotations. Essentially, it is the angle between the two, translated into the rotation of the ball. It requires a differential gear, a gearing arrangement that sums or differences two angular inputs. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like to know more?